Quiet, please. Quiet, please. so bright out you can read a newspaper. They can't read a newspaper by moonlight, only the headlines. Maybe if you take your newspaper out in the yard and stand in the moonlight, you might find a headline with my name in it. It's been there before. Well, anyway, so there's moonlight. Here there's rain, like it was that other New Year's Eve. That's what the rain makes me think of, as if I ever thought of anything else. Listen to the rain. I was sitting in my office in the writer's court out there after we'd been on the picture for two or three months. Writing it, that is. They'd been shooting for about three weeks, but I was still on the picture because we had a producer that couldn't make up his mind, and the director was one of those guys, uh, sort of road company Hitchcock, you know. He makes the picture up as he goes along. Only there has to be a writer filed away someplace where he can find him when he runs out of ideas which is not more than 11 times a day. So I'm dying. I go on the set and I find actors there I never heard of, speaking lines I never wrote in scenes I couldn't figure out. Then the director would get me in a corner and put the arm on me. This thing doesn't seem to quite gel, old man. You know? And me and my little typewriter go to work to unscrew things while the overtime and the gin army games go right on great life, that. Well, so I'm sitting in my office and the rain is on the roof and the gas heater is frying my ankles while the draft from the window is giving my neck the deep freeze. Mary Lou, my secretary, comes in from her little cubby hole next to mine. When do I get to do my Christmas shopping, Mr. Van? You don't get to do your Christmas shopping, Mary Lou. Yes, I know. I didn't. What? Christmas was two days ago, Mr. Ramsey. Was it? Well, Merry Christmas. Are we ever going to finish this picture, for heaven's sake? Well, I'll tell you, Angel. Mr. Doty, the great director, is getting $3,500 a week. I know it. And, my dear, Mr. Doty has not got $3,500 a week for a long, long time, see? Uh-huh. So, Mr. Doty, the great director, is going to make $3,500 a week just as long as he possibly can, and characters like us can, you know what. That man... I have a different word for him, sweetheart. But as I was saying, if we leave it to Mr. Doty, this here picture ain't never going to be finished. A hundred years from now, somebody will come upstairs here and they'll find an old, old man with a long white beard speeding out the 59th revision of scene 456 and in the next room a little apple-cheeked old lady. Oh, cut it out. Yeah. Oh, when are they going to finish it? No kidding. New Year's Eve. Well, maybe there'll be champagne and stuff on the set. Yeah, no doubt. For the expensive actors and the producers and the fine, upstanding director. For you and me, a nice bottle of 60-cent claret imported from right over there on Ventura Boulevard. You're so funny. Yeah, on the contrary. Well, I'm getting awful sick of this, Mr. Ramsey. We've had to work every single night for the last four weeks. Do you realize that? You kidding? Do I realize? Go get me some coffee, will you, kid? I gotta stay awake for Mr. Doty. Coffee? I bet you and I could be elected president of Brazil all the coffee we've put away. Answer the phone. It's Doty. Well, we gotta be dignified. Oh, Lord. 
Mr. Ramsey's office. Who's calling, please? Oh, yes, Mr. Doty. He's here. I'm always here. Ramsey. Yes, Mr. Doty. What seems to be the trouble? I see. Yes, I see. But Mr. Doty, I... Well... Well, that'll mean rewriting practically all the... Well, yes, I know. I mean... But what do you gain that way? What? Two monsters? Well, what's two monsters got that one monster hasn't? Oh, yeah, sure, but who scares who? Uh, whom, I mean. But, Mr. Doty, I saw a picture once with two monsters in it, and it was silly. What? Oh, you directed it. Uh, well, uh, well, well, I'll, I'll be right over. Skip the coffee, Mary Lou. Two monsters? Two Count them two. And I'll lay you six, two, and even that by the time I get to the stage, you'll be hollering for three. Take your raincoat. It's raining pitchforks. Maybe one of them will stab me. I better tell you about this monster stuff. Uh, this was a horror picture, you see. Kind of the poor man's Frankenstein. Yeah, they couldn't get Karloff, naturally, and... They couldn't use the Frankenstein monster makeup because Jack Pierce over at Universal invented that. I guess Universal owned it. So they had me dream up a monster. And boy, did I dream one up. There's an old book. It's called... No, I guess I won't tell you what it's called. Well, you don't want to take those old books too seriously so I kind of swiped this monster out of the book. Well, you'll never see the picture, I suppose, so maybe I better tell you a little about him. No, well, I guess I won't either. He was... He was the most horrible monster I ever saw. No kidding. And what the makeup department did with my sketch and my description. Oh, boy. Just one thing I'll tell you about him, and you can figure out the rest for yourself. He didn't have any face. You take it from there. But don't kid yourself. He was a thing. They got Ollie Tharp to play the goon. Nice fella, quiet, always grinning, modest. Good actor. Last guy in the world you'd expect to play a monster. Oh, yeah, sure. Karloff did the Frankenstein thing, and he's the mildest-mannered guy in the world. I remember him on the Son of Frankenstein set years ago in his monster suit all gray and green, showing pictures of his new baby to people. <laughs> I had to laugh. Well, I, I guess monsters are human sometimes, huh? Yeah, maybe humans are... Yeah. Well, all right. I spend three hours listening to Mr. Doty run off at the mouth with the whole company having the screaming memes over all this nonsense. It's five minutes to twelve when he finally decides to quit and everybody goes home. They're all burned at Doty, but you know, they'll wake up in the morning and remember the overtime and they'll feel better. Me? Writers don't get overtime. So I get back to the writer's court and the light's burning in the window and Mary Lou is snoring away with her face in a stack of carbon paper. She wakes up and asks me a question. How many monsters now? We got four now, I see. Including me. So the next morning it's not raining anymore. The sun is shining bright, and you can see snow on top of the mountains, and it's a very nice day. And monsters are pretty hazy in my mind as I pick up my copy of the reporter and head for the rickety stairway to my palatial office. I'll tell you how much good the sunshine did me. I was whistling as I climbed up the stairs and opened the door. You might as well turn off the whistle. Mr. Doty's looking for you. And now what? He says it's very important. Yeah, two more monsters. Your coffee's on your desk. Steaming cold, no doubt. I've just brought it up. Give me 15 cents. Well, it's your turn to buy this morning. I bought yesterday. All right, all right. Hello, no, he isn't here yet. Ah, go ahead. Mr. Ramsey's office. Yes, Mr. Doty. 
Morning, Mr. Doty. How are you? Oh? No kidding. Why, that's fun. What? Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. <gasps> Why, sure, Mr. Doty. Yes, sir, I'll be right over. What? He has to finish the picture definitely by 12 midnight, December 31st. Oh, that's what you said last night. Well, I was kidding. You know how it goes in the story. I forgot. Well, I mean the way it was originally. You know, this this monster only has power the last hour of the year. Oh, yes. Remember, it was a New Year's party, the whole picture? It's been so long ago, I forgot how we started. Well, don't you remember our big payoff scene? She thinks the monster is her wicked uncle? Who thinks? You know, the babe with the teeth. The groom girl with a blue dress. Oh, yes. Remember, she, she thinks the monster is her uncle and she tries to rip his mask off and it ain't a mask? Something like and that. And the house is on fire and he grabs her and runs inside the house and our hero busts in after her and rescues her... Some way I never had a chance to figure out. But how would he do it without his glasses? He'd fall over the stoop. What stoop? There's hundreds of them in pictures. Drink your coffee and go see Mr. Doty. Maybe he's changed his mind. No, he can't change his mind. The front office puts a big fat arm on him. Or else. <laughs> Whoopie, baby, three days and we can sit down and rest. Away from this place. You can say that again. Tell him I ain't here. <laughs> Well, sir, that sunshine looked better than ever to me. But when the big door of the stage swung shut behind me, the sunshine sure disappeared. Well, Mr. Doty was an unhappy man. Well, three more days and there wouldn't be any more of those $3,500 is. And he didn't like it a little bit. And guess who he took it out on? This is the worst story I ever had to work with. It positively smells bad. I didn't say it's your story, Mr. Doty. All I got left is a monster, and you probably turn out to be Santa Claus or somebody. Did you listen to me when I told you how to do it? I didn't say. I listened to you, Mr. Doty, and now look what we got. Now I have to give up my beautiful idea of having three monsters instead of one. Because then we'd have had to reshoot practically the whole picture, and you'd have made another million bucks. I didn't say that either. So, if you think you could possibly dredge up your original script, I think I can possibly make it into an acceptable B picture. Although that's a task even for a director like me. Mr. Doty doesn't realize what an unconscious humorist he is. That guy could make a B picture out of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, even if he had the original cast. So get to work. Get to work and do something. Have I got to do everything around here? Get a move on you. Oh, I got a move on me. Even if you think I dislike that guy up to now. What? He said to me the last two days. You've got to get some sleep somehow. You've been on your feet for almost two days, Mr. Ramsey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, where were we? Scene 168. Long shot interior match and night. From the top of the stairway, I see up here in the sink in the shadows. We sense, rather than see, the twisted evil form of the monster as he peers over the balustrade. From the foreground right, the butler peers and starts slowly up the stairway. As he reaches the fourth or fifth step, the camera starts to move in to follow him. We claim up the stairs and the camera holds on the last three steps as the butler reaches the top. Cut to... Hey, wake up! Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Where were we? Ramsey, you've got to get some sleep. Lie down for ten minutes. Yeah, I'd sure like that. Mr. Ramsey's off. I'm not here. Yes, Mr. Doty. All right. All right, all right. Hello? Yes? Sure. I'll be right over. Oh, Mr. Ramsey, I was... You know what, Mary Lou? Well, oh, put on your coat. It's raining again. You know what? What? I wish I was a monster. You know, I was a tired little fellow. I didn't have any Thanksgiving. I ate a bent ham sandwich in my office that day because Mr. Doty had to have three new scenes Friday morning. He called me at the office to see how I was doing. He just finished his Thanksgiving dinner. I didn't have any Christmas. I locked the door of my office and baked my brains out on a whole new sequence Mr. Doty had caught up. 
All around me, people were drinking whiskey and chasing each other through the corridors and up and down the stairs. I didn't have any Sundays, and I didn't have any evenings. I, my friend, damn near lost my mind. And all the time, Mr. Doty. Wow. And it's no wonder that by New Year's Eve, I was ready to hire a man with a cleaver to extirpate the guy. But I didn't. Nope, I sure didn't. At nine o'clock, he called me over to the set again. Could I rewrite some dialogue? <laughs> well, I crossed him up on that one. I threw out the hash he'd made of my original dialogue and substituted what I'd originally written. It played okay. After seven different takes, all exactly alike. I went back to my office in the rain. Mr. Ramsey's office. Yes, Mr. Doty. Yes, Mr. Doty. I'll tell him. Mr. Ramsey. I heard you. He needs you right away again. Okay, okay. You poor thing. Only another couple of hours. Hope I can take it. Take your raincoat. It's raining cats and dogs. You're telling me. That time it was a little piece of action he couldn't get through his ivory head. I explained it in words of one syllable, carefully avoiding the four-letter one. He thanked me, old boy. And I went out into the rain again. Rain. What rain in California can do to you? I heard of a fellow that jumped into the Los Angeles River once after a week of rain. Ordinarily, he'd break his ankle, but he drowned. You know, it just comes down steadily. Well, I know I could probably be a lot more graphic than that, but that's all there is to rain in California. It comes down steadily. Ice cold. Steadily. Yeah. Of course, it always stops about the time you've decided to start out on foot for the east. The sun shines and poinsettias bloom and the hills are green. Oh, man, it's wonderful. I guess they have the rain like hitting yourself on the head with a hammer. It feels so good when you stop. Yeah, that's a bum gag, but I was a pretty beat-up character. Three more times that New Year's Eve in the rain. The guy getting meaner and meaner each time. Well, at least it was going to be over pretty soon. It was ten minutes to eleven when I came into the office and Mary Lou took my coat from me. You've just got to get a little sleep, Ramsey. Now, you sit down at your desk and put your head down and catch 40 winks. Oh, thanks, Mary Lou. Oh, if I had to see that man just one more time tonight, I would be responsible. I'm not kidding. I know. You go to sleep. Well, kid, you're as all in as I am. Well, at least I don't have to face him. He's got to stop at midnight. As soon as he's through... Should you and me go someplace and have a New Year's drink? I, I don't know whether I could keep awake. Well, let's try, huh? Okay. <laughs> Anybody ever tell you you're a nice gal? Couple of people. <laughs> I could marry a gal like you. Don't kid people, Ramsey. I'm not. You see how you feel when you wake up? I think. I love you. I wish you meant that, Ramsey. I do. Kiss it from good night. Ramsey, you're sweet. Kiss me good night. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, go to sleep. Sleep, I couldn't get that guy Doty off my mind. I dreamed I was on the set. I dreamed they were shooting the last scene, the one where the monster comes closer and closer to the camera till that head of his without any face fills the whole screen. You know how it is in dreams. You're here, and then all of a sudden you're there, and you're one guy, and then you're another, and it's all mixed up. Yeah. I could see the set, and I could hear Doty call out. What? Roll 
And then I could see this faceless monster coming out of the shadows. Slowly, slowly right up to the camera where George Robinson was standing, tired as everybody else. Then I thought to myself, if the audience had any idea that little old milk toast Polly Tharp was inside that monster rig, they'd bust. And then in the dream, I saw Doty jumping up and down in one of those silly rages of his, and he yelled, Come on! Get back there and fly over! You've got about as much minutes as... as, as much minutes as... as a Randy over there! Even in my dreams, he was picking on me. And so they started all over again. My dream got kind of mixed up all right there, and, and I sort of seemed to be following the monster because I could see Doty's face right in front of me as the monster moved in. When Doty yelled, cut again, the monster and I didn't stop. I just sort of seemed to follow him right on, farther and farther. I saw the monster's big, hairy hand grab Doty, and Doty screamed, and the monster's hands were fumbling at Doty's neck. Dodie was fighting, and I saw Dodie bite the monster's hand. It was so real, I could almost feel it. And then everything got black in my dream, and there were a lot of, a lot of bells ringing, and well, that's what woke me up. So I raised my head, and of course, there I was in my office. And I pulled myself up, out of it a little, and then I knew what the bells were. They were bells ringing in the new year. The rain was hammering on the roof, and it was tomorrow. So I got up and hollered for Mary Lou. Mary Lou? Hey, Happy New Year, Mary Lou. And she didn't answer. I stepped through the door into her little office. And she was lying on the floor behind her desk. And the look on her face was something I never want to see again. It was a look of the most awful horror anybody could imagine. The kind of look you'd expect to see on the face of someone who'd been literally frightened to death by a monster who had no face at all. So I stood there. After a few seconds, I heard people yelling outside. I heard somebody yell that Holly Thorpe had killed Doty. Somebody else said, no, Ollie Thorpe was dead, too, with a broken neck in his dressing room. And my hand hurt. When I raised my hand to look at it, right across the thick of my palm were teeth marks. Deep, bloody teeth marks where Dodie had bit me when I strangled him. So you see, that's why I say never take any of those old books too seriously. Remember I said I wished I was a monster? Remember what the book said? The monster only possessed his murderous power for one hour, the last hour of the year. New Year's Eve again. And it's raining. You got anybody you want murdered? <laughs> Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. The man who spoke to you was Ernest Chappell. And Muriel Kirkland was Mary Lou. Pat O'Malley was Doty. Music for Quiet, Please is composed and played by Albert Berman. Now, for a word about next week's Quiet, Please, here is our writer-director, my good friend, Willis Cooper. I have a story for you next week about a man who was haunted. It's called The Little Visitor. And so until next week at this time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. Quiet Please comes to you from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.